Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good. So we are getting this up, and I understand you will be getting to go to lunch right after this, right? Okay. I will be mindful of that. So um, my name is Kristen Vandersloos, and I am with a communications firm called ProPros, and we are one of the many subcontracting firms that have um, been contracted with Caltrans to help them do some public outreach up and down the state for um, a big plan update that's happening. So that's why I'm here today to talk with you to tell you about our strategic highway safety plan. And um, so I'll be giving you an overview of what the plan is. And then I'm going to be talking with you about ways you can get involved. And then afterwards, I'll really want to have an interactive session to hear from some of you on some ideas for how we can help spread the word about this, um, this plan and the process um, to those that you are involved with. So let me give you an overview. Strategic Highway Safety Plan. I may just refer to this as the plan or SHSP as I move forward through the slides. Um, this is a plan that was, it's actually federally required, so all of the states across the country need to have a plan to receive federal transportation funds. And we put ours together back in um, 2006, and um, it's time for an update. And so that's why we're here. We have an update process that's going on right now. The, the initial draft plan for the update is actually going to be put together by December. Um, and so that is a really quick time frame, and um, we need your help to get people involved. The, the plan addresses safety on all public roads, and um, it's strategic data-driven process. And by that, we mean that um, the approach looking at a plan and how to reduce fatalities and um, critical injuries is really based on the data that's out there, looking at the major crash factors and um, seeing where the biggest difference can be made. And I'll go to our next slide. And before they do that, though, too, I'm curious, have, have any of you even heard of this before? Has, who's heard of the Strategic Highway Safety Plan? Nope? Okay. That's good. Good to know. So as we move on, I will tell you that um, the impact for uh, safety incidences in California is huge. So we have the human costs, where we have um, over 2,500 people die on California roadways each year, and nearly 11,000 are seriously injured. And the economic cost is tremendous as well. So uh, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, these accidents are costing California um, close to $22 billion a year, which um, works out to be about $608 per capita. And this is money that we could be using for other opportunities, such as building up our infrastructure or funding schools and many other worthwhile projects. There are many people who have been involved with the initial creation of the plan, the first round. Um, this is a slide that gives you an example of some of our, our partners and stakeholders that have been involved in the process. This is not um, everybody, but just a, 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 a sampling of people so you can see we've got Caltrans, we've got some universities, we have advocacy groups. Um, a lot of people have been involved. It's a broad-based group of stakeholders and they're from a variety of public agencies and also private sector organizations. And the purpose, the purpose of this plan is, is obviously to reduce the number of crashes and fatalities. This slide gives you an example of that um, strategic approach I mentioned before. Um, this shows you a way that some of the topics are organized. So um, some of the pieces that are, that are looked at um, are demographic groups what is happening with our younger drivers under 21 years old? How about our older drivers over 65? Um, we look at infrastructure, so roadways, um, behaviors. Are people driving impaired um, from alcohol or drug use? And a hot topic, unfortunately, right now is distracted driving as well and seatbelt use. Also look at the different types of um, transportation users. So, we're looking at um, what's going on with our commercial vehicle drivers versus bicyclists or motorcycles and pedestrians. So we're not just looking at um, you know, the typical one-person driver, but it's, it's very comprehensive. And um, I, it's been wonderful to look at 
the data. So we have engaged hundreds of partners statewide since this process took place. There were over 600 people that um, came together to create the initial plan. And, um, and since then, about um, 100 people have been involved in the last eight years in working groups to implement a number of the actions that were suggested in the original plan. And the reason this is fun to talk about is that this is a real success story, an example of how, of how government is working. So um, it's great to see what can be accomplished when people work together, and I'll show you what that looks like. So we have some great data here. Um, when the plan was initially put into place and some action steps were be, being implemented, we were pleased to see that fatalities went down by 28%, which is fantastic. And then serious injuries went down by 17%. And um, so what I'll also point out, and we only have data right now through 2012, um, but if you follow this trend line where um, casualties and severe injuries went down, Unfortunately, in um, 2010, we hit our low point, and then the last few years, we've been going up. And so that's something that we obviously need to address and is part of why we need people to come together and give us input on how we can stop the, the numbers from going back up. And when we look at this, this chart, um, I, I would just point out that there's um, a number of explanations for why the numbers have been changing. So, a lot of people think that this is because of the economic downturn. So there obviously we think is a, a correlation there. Um, but it's been interesting to see that when the vehicle miles traveled, um, that we track to see um, you know, people are um, more economically impacted, they're driving less, they don't want to um, spend as much money on gas. As those numbers um, were going down, we actually saw that our um, accident and fatality rates were going down faster. And so it's not a direct um, correlation, although there is um, most likely some correlation. And um, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to look at this again and to see how can we keep that number going back down instead of up. And when we look at why this is needed, why do we need to update the plan? So, most of these uh, strategic highway safety plans across the country, the best practice that's recommended is an update every five years. And it's been eight years since ours was created, so it's definitely time. And then also, as we mentioned, the numbers that were going up. So we're seeing close to 3,000 fatalities since 2012, um, over 10,000 severe injuries, and that's unacceptable. So we see accidents as preventable that these are not um, accidents per se, but they're preventable deaths and injuries that do not need to happen. So as I mentioned before, this plan that was originally put together was a real success story. It is, and part of that is because there were um, over 177 actions that have been completed. And I'm pleased to say that California is leading the way across the nation, that we have had the most success in that area. Um, so they've, the efforts have been really effective and targeted, um, and the reason that this was successful um, is that level of collaboration that I mentioned before. So all of the different agencies working together and stakeholders and people committing their time, um, energy, and efforts is the exact same type of involvement that we need to keep this going and for it to continue to be a success. So. We are looking for input on this update process from a number of different groups. And you may see yourself in some of these and be involved with other groups. Obviously elected officials who can help set um, example and commitments from top down. And um, we have planners, advocates from a lot of different um, arenas. And we're working closely with our Native American tribes to make sure that they are involved. Law enforcement, educators, um, EMS workers are absolutely critical, our first responders. And then engineers from public and private sectors, we have a lot of different um, folks that we need to have be involved. Public health, public works, government, and community stakeholders. And at the end of the day, it's just a culture change that's needed and that's why we need everyone to be involved. So there's two ways that you can be involved coming up. 
Um, and I will just point out these, some of these dates have changed here, but there are going to be a series of webinars coming up the last week of October. And I can mention um, our revised dates for those. Those are um, going to be some two-hour sessions that people can dial in from wherever they are across the state and really um, hear some of the data, the recent data for topical interests that they find appealing. So um, if you would like to talk about impaired driving, then you would tune into that webinar. And so this is a way for people to, to really log into the topic that's most interesting to them. Yes, you will be hearing that data, but you'll have an opportunity to provide input. So it'll be an interactive session. And then from there, we're going to have two um, statewide summits. One will be held in Northern California, in Sacramento, and the other one will be down in Southern California. And we do have dates for these. So November 7th is our Southern California summit. So this will be an all-day event that, yes, you'll still be able to come and meet in those um, topical inter um, interest areas, but also get to um, hear from a lot of speakers and get a great overview of all of the different topics and how they work together. So it's a more of a comprehensive um, view of the plan. So November 7th, Southern California, and then, as I mentioned, Sacramento, November 14th. And we would love to have you join us at any of these opportunities coming up. Um, but we would also really like your help in spreading the word. And what I'm going to do is pass around um, two sign-in sheets. If you can help me get these out. We'll send them around the different areas of the room. And if you could provide your contact information, this is if you'd like to receive updates about um, the Strategic Highway Safety Plan update process. We will put you on our distribution list. And so you'll be receiving um, email notifications of summit information or any changes that are coming up in the future. So put your information there if you would like to um, hear more about this process. And also, you can go to the Caltrans website. There is a page dedicated just to this effort. And if you, if you don't want to put your information on here, you, or if you want to do this later, or point other people to this, you can sign up for the email distribution list um, on the website. And there's also a place there to provide comments. Um, and we, are we are doing a number of these presentations up and down the state and trying to reach as many people as we can to get the word out. Um, but we're going to be needing your help. So we'll, we'll dive into that in a few minutes. Um, but for now, does anyone have any questions that I can answer? Yes. So the summits, the question was what's involved with the summits, if it's training or presentations. Um, so as I mentioned, the summits will be um, full day events. And you will come, and um, some of the details are still being worked out. But we'll likely have people gather by their topic areas for some sessions. And we're, we're hoping to bring in um, interesting speakers that people will want to hear and, and interact with for each of the different topics. Um, and we're going to have plenary sessions where we're requesting input. So there's going to be a number of different ways to provide input. Um, and we'll, we can get more information to you as that becomes available. Yes? Safety. And there, yes, so, so um, yes, okay. the state needs, go ahead. Yeah. So therefore, all 50 states are doing the same thing, the ones that are receiving federal funding. Have you had a chance to look at their plans to get some ideas? So this is what's neat about our collaborative effort, not just with the stakeholders with the plan, but also with the different consulting groups that are coming together to work with Caltrans. So um, the firm that is um, the prime on this project with us is Cambridge Systematics. And they actually um, are back in Washington, DC, and work on most a lot of the state projects. And so it's been really neat to have their involvement. They can tell us a lot of um, comparisons. So for example, we have a lot of um, our topical areas. Um, we have actually about 16 or 17 of them. And this firm was able to point out to us that that is above and beyond higher than any other state. Most other states have about three or four um, topic areas that they have combined them into. And so we are utilizing that type of information to, to learn from best practices and really see what's working. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So okay. I'm curious about um, what collaboration you may have, your organization may have with um, other associations like the NPSA, and specifically, if I were the only one on the road, it would be perfect. <laughs> That's our dream scenario, right? <laughs> was entertaining thank you even just for the fun <laughs> words <laughs> that the, the 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 question really is 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 the plan being coordinated with NTSA um, and also how can we get people to change their driver behavior yes to my knowledge there is absolutely a collaboration so this is um, not just a collaboration with um, different agencies but also um, we're looking at I have a list actually here um, we've got American Traffic Safety Services Association, County Engineers Association of California, the Highway Patrol, California League of Cities, California Police Chiefs Association, California State Association of Counties, um, Caltrans, Department of Public Health, Department of Motor Vehicles, um, the EMS Authority, Metropolitan Transportation Committee, um, Commission, um, and Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. These are some of the groups that are co-leading this effort with Caltrans. Um, and so I can follow up with you to find out more about what the partnership with NTSA might look like, but I know that this is exactly why we're coming out and asking people for input, so that we can look at the latest data and we can see, wow, we're still having a lot of incidences from people crossing over, not using their turn signal, or, wh or whatever your, that your example might be. If you tune into a webinar, you can look at what the latest data is, and we absolutely want suggestions and people to provide input um, so that we can make improvements. Yes? Kristen, I apologize. I just want to uh, ask one question. Is there a correlation on the statistics with the 2,900 deaths uh, on alcohol-related deaths? How many of those? Do you guys have a statistic? So I imagine that that data is probably available, but I don't know off the top of my head. But we can find out for you if we get your information. So we are um, working with um, SafeTrack, which is um, a research group out of UC Berkeley. And they are transportation authorities, and they have data on just about everything. So um, it's great that they're going to be providing that input. So I think that that's the type of breakdown we can look at as we move forward. Yes, in the back. Um, one comment that you suggest for after, I, I may be so full with that. I, the connected vehicle uh, pro project that mm -hmm. UT is pushing out as well to a spectrum and connectivity between vehicles for safety, um, priority, uh, warning systems, uh, traffic lights, and so on and so forth. And uh, that's obviously going to be a critical part of any program that goes into safety. So it may be something that AFCO might be interested in from a uh, management level, uh, understanding and being involved with, uh, mm -hmm. since that's going to be one of the, since they're not building any more roads, it's how mm -hmm. to make it safer, and one of the ways is with wireless communications, uh, car to car, car to intersection, and so on. Mm -hmm. That's good. Any other questions? So I'm going to switch gears for us now and take a little bit more of your time to ask for some of your input while we have you here. We have a captive audience. You can't go to lunch until I'm finished with you. <laughs> um, and so what we have um, are some comment cards that we're going to be distributing to um, your tables. This is Rebecca Almanza from ProPros, who's also here with me. And she is um, 
diligently taking notes on her laptop up here. So everything, all the questions that came up today, we can get answers for. Um, and this next session, she will be um, documenting all of your input. And basically, what we want to know from you is, how can we best spread the word about this effort? So we are doing an update to Strategic Highway Safety Plan here in California. We need broad-based collaboration and input. And we have just a short time frame to get a draft put together. Um, and obviously, uh, resources are always something to be considered. It's um, always a challenge. So if we'd be interested to hear from you on how can we get the word out um, and so if there's different groups that you are involved with, um, listservs that you have access to, um, or if there's some groups that you're a part of that you recommend we also visit to do another one of these presentations, um, we are going to be doing everything that we can to get the word out. Um, so I'm throwing it out to you. Go ahead. Yes, and I think going back to statistics, you know, each group that you're talking to will have different interests, like parents, young teenagers, yeah. they'll be more concerned about teenage driving. Mm -hmm. Someone who, who has lost, uh, lost a loved one from DUI, someone got killed, yeah. will have that interest. Yeah. And then you're talking about the demographic of cultural dem demographics, mm -hmm. languages, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. So a lot of it depends on your statistics. So you absolutely. Our target audiences, absolutely. And that's part of the, the public outreach effort that's, that's happening right now. Um, just being mindful that we do have that tight time frame, though. We, in, a, in an ideal world, we would have known about all of this six months ago and had much more breathing room. And that just isn't always reality. And so um, given that we have a tight time frame, how do we quickly get the word out to the, the most people that we can? So if you have ideas, you can put them on your comment cards. And we will collect those afterwards. But I would love to hear from you. Does anyone have um, other groups that they're involved with that they think would um, benefit from a presentation that we like we had today? Have you contacted the, I know the uh, EPW, you know, roads type groups have a group like this? I don't think so. Yeah, they do. Okay. No, but I mean, we haven't contacted okay. them. But that is um, absolutely things like that. Every yeah. county has one. I know the state has one. Well, California. But they go to those meetings in the mm -hmm. region. So mm -hmm. that would be, they have a lot of the data or things they're doing locally. And tell me the group name again with um, the acronym Department spelled out. Public Works. Oh, okay. I'm sure that there's some coordination, but we will definitely make sure. And we, we're having team um, meetings weekly to try to collaborate. So I will bring this one up. Good. Any other ideas? Yes. Can you reach out to the California Wireless Association? Nope. Good. This is why we're here. We need your ideas. OK. Is that a pretty large group? We've interacted with them a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Good. Rebecca's capturing all of this. And I do know we're working with a lot of the um, larger governmental coordinating um, groups. And so I'm hoping that information is <laughs> trickling down, but I imagine it may not always. There's What's also traffic, traffic groups within, I know Marin and Sonoma mm -hmm. have a traffic group coalition. Because you have the one highway going up and down. They mm -hmm. have a coalition that works on that. And I know they have a web page. OK. We're in Sonoma traffic. Great. That's smart. Yes. I, I'd like to know how you quantify the, the difference in the death rate in accidents. I mean, that, that chart you had up earlier shows uh, the economy was good, the economy is bad, people aren't driving. Mm -hmm. Now the economy supposedly is getting a little better. There's more people working, so it's starting to go back uphill. I don't know. Can you tell me one thing that this plan has done in the past that's absolutely stopped accidents and deaths. I, I, I don't know you could put a finger on it because you can't change behavior. Behavior is behavior with the individual and they're going to do what they're going to do. 
so actually, um, I might have thought the same thing a few months back, but um, I have been looking at some of the data, and it's that this is why this is um, an innovative project for all of us to be working on, is that we're actually tracking for some of the first times and, and comparing month to month, year to year, what the data looks like. And so we can, and, we, and a lot of our behavior modification campaigns, we do actually have proven data that we can influence behavior. And no, we cannot absolutely change everybody. That's impossible, right? But we have seen, um, for example, one of the projects that our firm works on is the Slow for the Cone Zone um, project for Caltrans. We've had billboards up and campaigns going on. And we've seen um, an improvement there on some of the data that we can track. And so um, we actually are able to, to see influence and some behavior modification. Um, but we will have some of our data experts that are absolutely going to be on the webinars involved and then presenting at the summit. So that's why we would love to have you there. And they, um, they could talk for hours with you on all of that. That's just, they just love the data and all those questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. legalizing marijuana is probably going to happen in California. So will this be addressed in the report? So this is the type of topic we would talk about in the subgroup about um, driver behavior. And um, this question has come up before about marijuana use. And obviously, as laws are changing around the country, this potentially will be more of an issue. And um, the challenge that um, transportation planners are having and law enforcement folks is that we don't have um, as you'd mentioned, a way to quantify it. So if someone's pulled over, there's not um, a test that has been standardized. And so we're a little behind um, on where we would probably like to be there. Um, but that is a topic that is definitely on the table to be addressed and will be included. Yes, and I believe, did you have a question or comment? Well, I was just wondering if, if maybe the previous plan or maybe a future plan would be to you know, to work a little bit closer with the carriers because we have seen like AT&T, you know, has their public service announcements for, you know, no texting and driving. We see that mm -hmm. a lot of that. And that, I think pushing out things like that, mm -hmm. you know, to, to kind of reinforce, you know, very often uh, don't text and drive, um, you know, those kind of public service announcements I think are, are very beneficial mm -hmm. uh, because it, you know, it reminds me every time I see one to remind my daughter yeah. not to do it, you know. So I don't know, I have to plan has that kind of a focus to work um, with commercial companies? I am not sure. So we will find out about that. Yeah. Um, but I know that's part of why we're trying to get as many people involved as we can to reach out to a lot of the people that were involved initially. But many of the people that provided input um, are not always at their same companies or same jobs. Um, and so we are starting afresh in some ways. Um, but that's good. I know we want to look at all of that. There may be, and that's the type of question that we could ask um, at the webinar specifically for that topic, but we can also um, find out for you. So we're going to be sending around a follow-up communication um, as soon as we can get these answered pulled together for everyone. Rebecca, did you get that question? Okay. Yes. I was just going to say, as far as spreading awareness, um, uh, organizations that spread wide throughout California, uh, American Youth Soccer Organization, AYSO. Okay. You have people that are distracted with mostly children in their vehicles all hours of the day. Uh, you have coaches that have mandatory training sessions mm -hmm. and introduce in a, a coaching session. So just as far as awareness for distractions or education, that would be a good organization if you I love it because that's thinking outside the box. Thank you. Yes, that's great. Good. So any ideas for speakers that you would like to hear if you were to come to a summit? Is there either a person or a topic that you would be um, highly interested in? 
We know we want to look at marijuana. We know <laughs> we want to look at um, driver behavior and data. Is there, yes? One of the ones that they tell us, we were just discussing in the factory on the way here today, was California is the only state that allows lane splitting by motorcycles. <laughs> the only state left that does that. And every week you read in the B or some other newspaper yeah. where motorcyclists have gotten killed. Oh, yeah. That's the worst law. That's and it's the worst law. It's, it, and it's not only that, it's dangerous. I, I was explaining that when we were on the freeway. I was mm -hmm. doing about 70 down 80. Mm -hmm. The car next to me was doing 70. And I had a motorcycle split the lane between us. And you don't see them sometimes. And then you don't even know they're dead, so they're right up on you. And the noise of the motorcycle is deafening. Yeah. It distracts people. It, it has an issue like that. Mm -hmm. I have no problem like sitting at a red light and the motorcycle wants to scoot up between mm -hmm. cars. I have no problem with that. But what they're doing on the freeway is extremely dangerous. Good. So we'll make sure that's included on that webinar. Mm -hmm. Good. Any, anything else that people? <laughs> Um, so also, where does everyone here go to get their information? So I know that you're part of this organization. Where else do you look for, for, what? for updates on um, projects to get involved with to, as you represent your employers or as a private citizen? Fantastic. And Jim has kindly um, offered that we can send around some information after. Which is great. What else? The Sacramento Bee has a, a, a weekly uh, thing called the Backseat Driver. Okay. Which they talk about local transportation issues and so forth on there, and maybe a place where they you know, advertise that for you. That's great. The San Jose Mercury News has something called the Road Show. Okay. Where they always talk about things that are going on locally. This is great. Marin County has a web page. Um, is that Marin County? Marin County, mm -hmm. where you, they have a traffic division mm -hmm. where they post that kind of stuff. Yeah. Great. For the citizens to look at. Over here. I, I think the key is if I you know, take off my business hat and be a citizen, yeah. what's going to prompt me to go to the great resources? I absolutely, putting on my communications hat, I absolutely hear what you're saying. It's we need to get the hook out there of sort of, we call it with them. What's in it for me? We have to answer that question to get people's interest. And that's something that we need to look at. So those are, yes, those are being utilized a lot with the, like where they put amber alerts and the drought messages right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Anything else before we close that you would like to share or add? Any other questions? I'm going to quickly just list off the, the correct webinar dates before um, we sign off here. So we mentioned the two summit dates, which are in November, the 7th and the 14th. For the webinars, we have, let's see, six different topical areas that we have um, grouped our topics within. And on October 28th is going to be um, the Tribal Safety Webinar from 10 to 12. And then we're going to be, um, the afternoon session will be called Special Populations. And what we mean by that is our, our young drivers, our older drivers, and commercial drivers. So that will be on the 28th from 2 to 4 p.m. And then on October 29th, we have um, driver behavior um, webinar from 10 to 12, which it sounds like a lot of you might find very interesting. Um, that's where we'll be addressing impaired driving, distracted <coughs> driving, seat belts, speeding, all of that. Um, later that day on the 29th, we'll have infrastructure and operations. Um, a lot of engineering aspect there, and that will be good. Uh, then we have two more on October 30th. The first one will be vulnerable road users. So that will be addressing pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorcyclists. And that session will be from 10 to 12 on the 30th. And then we have our um, emergency medical services webinar, which may be of interest as well. 
Um, so that EMS session will be from 2 to 4 on October 30th. So um, we will be collecting the sign-in sheets that went around and we'll be adding everybody's information to our distribution list. We'll also be sending information out um, to this group um, in the next week and would really appreciate your help spreading the word to um, the groups that you're involved with and others that you think might be interested. And um, we hope to see you at one of the summits or hear from you on one of the webinars. Yes. It's CPRA, which is a Southern California version of this meets next Thursday. So Thank you. CPRA? Yes. Okay. Good. How, how do you, uh, what kind of mean or resources do you use to pass this information to the younger generation? What do you use? Because, you know, the kids usually don't find out until they go into the DUI school. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are, um, several of us are going to be meeting in the next week to put together a, a public outreach plan to really try to reach as many different target audiences as we can. And that's what we're going to talk about. And we know social media, as you mentioned, is huge. Um, Facebook, Twitter. Um, but what we've seen to be the most successful, and it doesn't seem to matter um, what age group, is really tagging onto groups that people are already involved with. And that's part of why we came today to reach all of you is um, any, any way that the, you know, the teens and young people are already getting their information or people that they trust will be looking at all of that. Yeah. That's good. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your time. It was fantastic.